theoretical benefits of oral delivery of natural form of hormones are obvious. In addition to the decreased potential of adverse effects, there are clear advantage in convenience, cost, compliance, and quality of life. So this service that's better all the way around. So Hargrove from the clinics of North America, hormones that occur naturally in humans would appear preferential to the synthetic counterparts. The metabolic footprints of foreign hormones cause a variety of side effects not seen with natural. And that's any time you alter the structure, you're going to get side effects. We and others have demonstrated that a micronized natural progesterone produces excellent results without the side effects of fluid retention, breast swelling and tenderness, weight gain, depression that are all commonly seen with celiac progestins. I mean, who doesn't want that? Effects on the fetus. You know, people, um, you know, doctors will they'll call and say, oh, they're the same, they work the same way. Let's look at, you know, basically um, progesterone is progestational hormone. It's needed for the baby to grow. What's in the morning after pill? Basically Provera, synthetic progestin. You kills it. Opposite effects. And I'll show you, we had one patient uh, came in with, with breast cancer, precancerous breast lesions on both breasts, and said, can you do anything? I said, well, here's some studies on high-dose progesterone. So that sounds great. I like to try, but please call my oncologist. So we call the oncologist, get him in line, takes about a half an hour. And he just, he got very upset. He's like, this is ridiculous. Progestins cause cancer. Why would you ever do this? Well, no, doctor. Here's a study. Progesterone is very, uh, very different than progestins. They're the same. They work on the same receptor. What medical school did you go to? It got kind of nasty. So he, said, <laughs> so he said, fine. If you don't kill her, take her breasts off in six months. Click. So that's it. So we basically, we do, we, we do the high-dose progesterone. She comes back in five months. We open up. We have the scan. We open it up. It's gone. Undetectable. She starts crying. She's so happy that she doesn't have her breast taken off now. So we don't know if the oncologist saw the scan or not. So we get him on the phone. He gets on the phone. He says, yes, I've seen the scan. I'm very happy. But I'm sure it had nothing to do with the progesterone because progestins cause cancer. And he said, OK, you'd like to believe it's a miracle then. You know, fine. <laughs> so it shows you this, you know, the tunnel vision. So again, more opposite effects with these two. Do studies demonstrating Provera's harmful carryover to progesterone? Absolutely not. So let's talk about estrogens, Premarin, pregnant, you know, mare, horse, urine in, Premarin, pregnant horse urine. And that's where they get the name. So Premarin, even natural or estrogens, will increase clotting factors in inflammatory proteins, increasing the risk of uh, you know, stroke, thromboembolism. This does not occur with transdermal natural estrogens. So you don't want to take the estrogens orally, even natural. Natural less, certainly less risk, but but still, uh, you can be more optimal by giving it transdermally. In fact, it can be considered malpractice to give oral estrogen to smokers because of increased risk for stroke and heart attack. So they say, well, it's malpractice, but someone who's less risk, oh, yeah, you're going to have an increased risk, but it's not that bad. Well, again, who wants to be at, at increased risk at all? When oral estrogen is given with synthetic progestin, the risk of thrombolytic stroke and increased heart attack work in a synergistic manner. So you add Provera, then you add oral estrogen, it's adding fuel to that fire. So again, majority of our patients are on the natural transdermal estrogens. So let's again talk about oral estrogen. The Women's Health Initiative study demonstrated increased risk stroke, heart attack, dementia due to increased clot. Again, goes to the liver, increases clot formation. That's what causes stroke and heart attack. And also the increase, um, uh, the basically the binding protein, so it lowers your thyroid, it lowers your growth hormone, lowers your adrenal function. So all those cause problems, weight gain, fatigue. Again, this does not occur with transdermal estrogen. The Lancet, so a very respected medical journal, differential association of oral and transdermal estrogen replacement in venous throm thromboembolism, so clot. They compared the risk of the, uh, of the clot with the use of oral and transdermal estrogen, including natural. They found concluding oral but not transdermal estrogen is associated with increased risk for um, venous thrombosis in postmenopausal women. The data suggests that transdermal estrogen might be a safer, uh, safer than that of oral estrogen in respect to thrombotic risk. For many years, again, we've discouraged patients from taking oral estrogen. But I mean, by far the worst is, is synthetic estrogens. So again, natural estrogen versus transdermal. 45 healthy postmenopausal women aged 45 to 64 years were assigned randomly to one of the three groups. Cyclic natural estradiol administered orally, and that's kind of with the, um, like Suzanne Summers and Dr. Schwartzbein recommends, uh, or transdermal, both combined with progesterone 14 days per month or no hormonal treatment. We conclude that oral estrogen progesterone replacement therapy may result in coagulation activation and increased fibrolytic potential, 
whereas a, a, a opposed transdermal estrogen appears without any substantial effects on hemostasis. Whereas these results may account for increased risk of venothromboembolism in users of oral postmenopausal estrogen, they emphasize the potential importance in the route of estrogen administration in prescribing hormone replacement therapy to postmenopausal women, especially those at a higher thrombotic disease risk. So basically, uh, the, woman, the uh, Suzanne Summers book recommends oral estrogen. I mean, again, I think the book's done great things and brought aware awareness to the bioidentical hormones, but I think oral estrogen is not a great way to go. And here's actually the results of this study. This is actually fragment one and two, where basically it, when uh, you form a clot, it cleaves these off. So here's the oral estrogen increased here uh, with the oral estrogen, and here's no treatment, and here's transdermal estrogen. The, um, here, PI1, so this increased risk for stroke and heart attack, whereas the transdermal or no, no treatment didn't have any problem. Again, here, fibrolytic uh, capacity. So you see, basically, oral estrogen increases this um, uh, risk all the time. So Premarin in cancer. Premarin is made from pregnant uh, horse's urine, hence its name we just talked about. Consists of a combination of uh, estrogens that are more, they're actually much more uh, carcinogenic. And the major component of, of Premarin is, is 4-hydroxyquinoline. And is about 100 times the potency of natural estrogen and also carcinogenic. So basically, you're take, when you take Premarin, you're taking this equinolin, which is basically uh, carcinogenic and is extremely potent. So the author summarized, these results suggest that a 4-hydroxyquinolin has potential to be potent carcinogen through the for formation of a variety of DNA lesions in vivo. So natural estrogens have no such carcinogenic metabolites. OK, so Premarin in breast cancer, they followed 58,000 women for 16 years, so that's 725,000 person years, and they found that compared with um, uh, that compared with women who never used hormones, the use of Premarin from ages 50 to 60 increased the risk of breast cancer to age 70 by 23 percent. Again, the addition of progestin resulted in a tripling of this breast cancer of 67 percent. So Premarin's bad, but then you add Provera to it, and it just skyrockets. So natural estrogens in cancer. It's interesting, natural estrogen estriol is shown to decrease the incidence and inhibit breast cancer. So the opposite, and that's another problem with Suzanne Summers' book is that Dr. Schwartzbein does not even mention estriol. And it's wonderful, it's an, it's an estrogen, the higher your estriol level, the lower the cancer risk. So why not use it? Levels of estriol in women who are, are inversely correlated with the risk of breast cancer, low levels being associated with cancer while high levels are protective. The analysis of six epidemiological studies of estrogen levels in women found that there are higher estriol levels in populations with lower risk for breast cancer. So again, higher estriol, lower the breast cancer. So again, uh, estrogens in cancer, study published in the Journal of American Medical Association entitled Estriol, the Forgotten Estrogen. He reviewed a study in which estriol was given to postmenopausal women with breast cancer. There was a 37% uh, of the patients demonstrated remission or arrest of the, the disease. He concluded that natural estrogen should be given to all women who need estrogen replacement but are at risk for breast cancer. Well, who isn't at risk? A case can be made that all women, again, are at risk, and estriol should be part of the hormone replacement regimen. So they had a regression of the breast cancer. He writes, quote, enough presumptive and scientific evidence has been accumulated that we may say that orally administered estriol is safer, let's have the estrogen that causes the least risk. <laughs> Journal of Medi American Medical Association, 1978. Wow. And so they say, oh, there's no studies. No one's ever you know, done a study on estriol. Mm 